What's up everyone, Alex here. Today we're going to be talking about three steps to improve your squash serve. So these steps will be progression steps, so it's best to focus on them in order and only move on to the next one once you got the step before. There are definitely more than these three steps when thinking about a serve, but these are three steps that have helped me personally when I serve and I think they can help you guys as well. Anyways, let's get to it. I tried to show a variety of angles in the footage that I got, so hopefully it's a bit easier to implement it on court when you guys are trying it out. Okay, so step number one is hitting the sidewall. So especially players who do not have that much experience serving, getting into the sidewall is probably the most fundamental part of serving. So the reason for this is that you want to take away the volley from the player receiving right away and force them to have to let the ball drop to the back of the court. If you're not used to hitting the sidewall, I would probably just focus on getting a bunch of serves to the sidewall in general. And as you can see in the footage, obviously these are not great serves by any means, but getting the serve to hit the sidewall is definitely where I would start as opposed to focusing or caring too much where on the sidewall it actually hits. When you don't get the serve to the sidewall, it's really easy for your opponent to attack the ball, especially if they're good at volleying. But when you do hit the sidewall, it causes them to both worry about how tight the ball is going to be to the wall, as well as force them to move their feet when they're going to set up and hit the ball. So even the shots that are shown here, even though they're landing quite short for a serve, the opponent would still have to move their feet in order to get set up and hit the ball. When the ball doesn't hit the sidewall, often the opponent isn't moving at all to hit their shot and it's a quite an easy shot for them to hit. Okay, so now step two. Once you are consistently able to hit the sidewall, we can focus a bit more on where on the sidewall to hit. So for me, a good guideline that I have found is to use the box as a reference point and to aim to get the ball behind that box. You generally want to send the opponent to the back of the court, so if the ball is hitting the sidewall but not going past the box, it's landing too short and the opponent is going to be near the tee line and in the middle of the court, as opposed to the back of the court and out of position. Okay, so lastly, step number three, the final step. This is a step I don't think that many people know about, but it's pretty crucial in my opinion, and that is to not let the serve hit the back wall first. So ideally you want the ball hitting the ground and then dying in the back, rather than the ball hitting the back wall and springing towards the middle of the court. This goes back to the same idea of not letting the opponent be set up in the middle of the court where the tee is, rather having the opponent at the back of the court, having the second bounce dying in the back. So this footage is me showing the ball hitting the back wall first and essentially what not to do during the serve. So I'm following the first two steps, but the third step is not to hit the back wall and in the footage I'm hitting the back wall, which you don't want to do. So I find that in all three of these steps, if followed properly, it doesn't really matter too much the angle you're hitting it at or the height and power that is being used when hitting the serve for the serve to be effective. It also doesn't really matter whether this is done on the forehand side or backhand side. These steps can work for both as you can see in the footage. So here are a couple examples of serves that follow all three steps and I try to toss in some footage of the viewpoint where a player would normally receive which can hopefully help gain some perspective in how tough it is to receive the serve when the three steps are implemented. You should notice that as soon as the ball looks like it's an easy ball to volley from this perspective, it ends up hitting the side wall. This is because I'm aiming to hit the side wall just past the service box, but not hitting it hard enough that it hits the back wall. So these are steps I've been trying to keep in mind ever since I was a younger player. And as I progress throughout the levels in squash, I still have to keep reminding myself of at least one of the three once in a while. Anyways, I hope these steps have helped you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.